Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second week of your Radiant Body. Uh, most, some of you were in the call last night, and it went well, and it was an hour and 15 minutes, and at the very end, I realized I never hit the record button. Yeah, that felt good. So here I am recording the, the class again, which may be a good thing. Actually, you never know. I might be better at it this time. <laughs> so sit back, relax, grab your cup of tea. I'm sipping on my, uh, my. I'm going to show you guys this, my cold elixir this morning. I've got a kind of a bad cold when I went on my trip. I came down with a cold and I didn't have any of my normal stuff that I like to take there or when I get a cold. But this is hot water with a half a lemon, grated ginger, a little bit of raw honey, a little dash of cayenne, and then I put two drops of my um, essential oil on guard on there, which is like a miracle oil. I'm using on the boys, and it has knocked out their colds like you wouldn't believe. So I've got that in there, and I'm going to sip on that as we talk today. So today, I hope everybody did well last week and is enjoying the first week of the program, um, or did enjoy the first week of the program. We've covered quite a bit so far. I'm hoping that you got your feelings down and your intentions and feel good about being really rooted in this program. Um, I'm thinking about um, wondering how it went with with kind of experimenting with the protein and drinking your water and starting to eliminate the toxic 12. This week we are going to be eliminating sugar and we're going to be talking about sugar in a little bit here. We're going to be talking a little bit about um, the detox and that's coming up whether you want to do a light detox or a full-on detox. We're going to talk about eliminating um, we're going to be fully eliminating the dirty dozen now. A little bit about how to balance your plate, stay healthy, and start to lose weight, but also have balanced blood sugar all day long with a balanced plate. And we're going to talk about stress and its role on weight and holding on to weight and digestion, and as well as mindfulness. And then I think that will cover, I talked a little bit last night about supplements, but it, it, it we ran out of time and I really didn't have time to go over it, so I sent everybody my recommended supplement list, and um, and I want to talk more about that as we go along, but basically I've looked forever on it. high quality supplements are really, really important. So um, we'll talk about that in another class when we have a little bit more time. But I did send you the list of supplements I think that are really essential, and, um, and we can talk more about that again, as I said before. So let's just dive right into talking about sugar because this is a big thing we're going to be taking out this week, and I'm going to be talking about all the reasons why it's so imperative to take sugar out of your diet. And um, for me, well, we'll go into that a little bit. So what sugar, what is sugar? Okay, that's a big, that's a good question. Everybody's like, well, I know, it's a white stuff that sits on the table called sucrose. But sugar comes from the sugarcane plant or a beet plant. And what, what it is is the juice from the plant gets extracted and crystallized. What they do, and they've stripped away all the fiber and the nutrients from the plant, and then they've crystallized it, and then that's how we end up with the white stuff that we now call sucrose. Americans are eating about 155 pounds of sugar a year per person. Stats are going up higher now. I've heard it's 165 pounds, but I was laughing last night because I always imagine those one big pounds of sugar the white sugar that you can buy in the one pound bags. And I just said that wrong. I realized I said that funny the first time. It's this cold. Um, but imagine stacking up those one pound bags, 155 of them in front of you and realizing that that is what you're eating. Maybe not you, but the average American is eating every year. And when you compare that back to our caveman days, we were eating 20 to 30 teaspoons of sugar in a lifetime. And now we consume that every day. And someone pointed out at the call last night, that's about a half a pound of sugar a day if you're eating 155 pounds a year, which is just insane. Um, and then in, in the last just 200 years, we've increased our sugar consumption by 1,500%. And guys, the, our bodies were not made to eat this much sugar. We're seeing this in... in um, in so many of our modern day illnesses because 
sugar is the root of all modern disease because it causes inflammation. So diabetes, um, you know, heart disease, arthritis, um, autoimmune disease, a lot of this stuff comes out of um, inflammation and sugar is the number one killer right now. And frankly, we, I think it's one in four kids are obese and it's a real epidemic and that comes from sugar as well. It's hidden in everything. It's really, really difficult not to eat sugar. Um, which is why we need to start reading our labels. And sugar comes in 40 different names, okay? So I'm going to be sending you a list of those names later on so you can kind of see how it's hidden in labels. So you start reading labels and you'll know it may not say sugar. In fact, it probably won't. It might say crystallized cane sugar or something like that. But there's 40 names for sugar. Lots of them end in OSE, like maltose, dextrose, sucrose, fructose. You get the idea. But there's lots of other names. So it's good to see where the sugar is hiding and start looking at your label so you can get an idea as to where, where it is and how many grams of sugar you're getting per serving. And actually, I didn't talk about this last night, but it's really important to note that you get, it's four teaspoons of sugar is, or four grams of sugar is one teaspoon. Okay, so four grams is one teaspoon. So for instance, when you're looking at a yogurt carton, I always like to bring up yogurt because this is a place where if you're getting a flavored yogurt, you're eating so much sugar. Most yogurt has a minimum of 24, 30 grams of sugar. It has a flavor. So if you look at the, the label and it says 20 grams of sugar, that's five teaspoons, five teaspoons in the sugar carton. And most of it has more. So, you know, and a Coke can, 12 teaspoons of sugar. Um, it adds up very, very quickly. So it's a really good thing to, so when you're looking at labels, to remember four grams is one teaspoon. Okay, so moving on here. Sugar is a highly, highly addictive drug. Okay, we've all seen maybe the exposés on sugar in the last few years, 60 Minutes, New York Times, lots of great sugar, um, some documentaries. But it's true. They did these studies where the brain gets um, eats sugar versus a study with, um, I think it was, it was either crack or cocaine. I don't remember which one. And found out that, by, that, that, that those two substances light up the exact same part of your brain. Same thing, the addiction part. So when you eat a little bit of sugar, your body is begging for more because, um, first of all, it's highly addictive, but also we're going to talk a little bit about the, the, the roller coaster of insulin, the energy crash, and what happens with that. But when you're trying to get yourself off of sugar, you go through pretty major withdrawal, likened to withdrawing from drugs. So headachey, fluish, cranky, uh, tired. But the good news is that the symptoms go away really quickly. So um, two days, three days at the most, usually you get through those symptoms and you're good. And so last week I had you start backing off of sugar a little bit by bit um, uh, with the top, the dirty dozen sheet. However, and you can do that. You can start backing away from sugar little by little. But I find that even just a little sugar it makes me crave a lot more sugar. Um, so I recommend just backing away from it, it is good because you might get less symptoms. But then just going for it this week. Just let's just take ourselves off white sugar. I'm also going to mention that this includes refined white flours and white foods, and we're going to go into that in a little bit here. But it's not just white sugar that creates a response in your body. It's the flours and refined food. But before I talk about that, I do want to talk a little bit about um, how sugar robs your body of precious enzymes and minerals and uh, because it's a zero-nutrient uh, food zero. There's no nutrients in it. There's no fiber. There's no nothing. Oops, sorry, my phone's ringing in the background. Just ignore that. Um, so it's the ultimate empty calorie. When you eat food, your body has to have reserves of enzymes, minerals, and vitamins to process it. So if you don't, if the food doesn't have it, it's got to rob those from elsewhere in your body, okay? So it's taking food, taking these precious nutrients away from you just to metabolize the sugar. And that's why, like, there's, there's some, there's a link 
links to osteoporosis and sugar because the sugar has to leach calcium from your bones in order to metabolize that. Same with caffeine, by the way. It's really important to note, and I didn't, I, I'm glad I'm doing this class again. Caffeine also does that. It also robs your body of calcium to process the caffeine. Caffeine and sugar. Okay, so we talked about it lowering the minerals in your body, but it also lowers your pH. And pH is the blood alkalinity acidity ratio. So, um, and we'll be talking about this further down the road. But pH is, is, we want our pH in our body to be slightly alkaline. And we'll be talking about the acid in foods and the alkalinity of foods and how the balance of that is just really, really important. But sugar is highly acidic, as you can imagine, so it lowers the pH in your blood. Alkaline blood is what we're shooting for because in an alkaline environment, bad things can't live, like cancer, right? You need alkaline oxygenated blood um, for it to thrive. Or you don't, you want it to, to go away. If you have the opposite, it can thrive, right? Of course, we know sugar rots our teeth. It wigs out our pancreas, which we're going to talk about in a minute. It, it feeds candida, which is the, a yeast that we don't want. It's a, it's a yeast that can have overgrowth in our gut and cause a lot of problems. It fires up inflammation, which I already talked about. It, it helps um, with, or it, it creates diabetes, cancer, nervous system stress, screws with your adrenal glands, and your hormone function. In fact, there's a study that says women who have severe PMS usually eat two and a half times more sugar than, than the others. So there you have it. So the other thing is, I'm sure we all know that, you know, how, that when we eat sugar, we often get like that roller coaster crash. And that is because of the insulin effect, which I'm going to talk about now. So when we eat excess sugar, well, actually, first I'm going to talk about how we store, we store um, sugar and, we, and how it affects our liver. Excess sugar is stored in our liver is in the form of glycogen and is stored there for when your body needs it. So in between meals, we'll need it for our exercise. We need it for fasting overnight when we're sleeping. We need it for our brain. But we only need a little. I mean, and I'm talking a little. And so the excess of that sugar gets stored in your liver. And then when that fills up, it has to go somewhere. So that glucose is stored in your tissues, your, your fatty acids, into fat, as fatty acids, as triglycerides. And that's where tissue being adipose tissue, your fat, fat cells. So, <coughs> so that's what happens when the liver stored in full, which is quick, the muscles have had what they need, the brain has what's it need, what it needs, it gets stored in fat. Uh, I talked a little bit about how, unfortunately, people who tend to store more fat around their abdominals have more risk of heart disease and diabetes, and um, so it's important to get a to get a little bit of a handle on that. It also, of course, it, it can it can affect lots of organs there too. The good news is that by by uh, curtailing the sugar consumption, you can prevent and reverse the damage it's done which I love, by eating a highly alkaline diet, you can actually reverse some of this. And here's a quote that I, I love to give. It takes about roughly 10 to 15 years of a high sugar diet before a person develops a chronic illness. This is by Carolyn Dean, and a doctor, a naturopath as well, director of, of nutrition. At, um, anyway, I won't go on details there, but the so 10 to 15 years, that just means that going on in your body you've got a lot of inflammation that is happening that you can't see and it takes 10 15 years to actually see the symptoms of that so um, it doesn't just happen overnight now the pancreas we'll go to the pancreas now this is the insulin the pancreas sends out a hormone called insulin and that's in order and it carries out that, that insulin out to um, to take the sugar in your blood away after you eat a meal so the, it, it helps regulate blood sugar. So think of it this way. After you eat a meal, about an hour after, it enters into your bloodstream, and the body goes, whoa, where did all this sugar come from? I need to get it out of your blood. And so it takes it. It's like this little fire engine, and it distributes it, it, distributes it because you can't have too much sugar in your blood. And it takes it 
to three different places. It takes it to the liver, like I talked about before, to be used as fuel for your brain. And it takes it to muscles to be stored when you need to move, walk, work out, etc. And then if the brain's had enough, the muscles have had enough, it stores it in fat and, of course, causes weight gain. Now, we, I, I've been talking about white sugar, but I want to go back to a little bit about refined sugar. So if you think of refined sugar, you can think of white flour, um, anything that's been processed, like um, even like people are eating, eating gluten-free now. Well, that, that too counts as processed, and, and, and all of those processed foods create a very quick insulin response in your body because there's nothing to slow down the absorption of that food in your blood. In other words, they've taken a complex carb. Now, complex carb means a brown rice. That's a whole rice a whole grain like um, quinoa, right? Those are, those are millet, amaranth, oats. Those are all whole grains. And they've, rem they've removed the husk. They've removed um, much of the, the, the outer shell, the middle shell. And then, like, for instance, with brown rice, you're left with the white rice. And the white rice is just the very inside of the brown rice, and it's the sugar. It's the starch. So when you remove all of that, you are left with just the sugar. And, and then they process it down even more and, and take out anything and, and that could give it fiber, basically. And because of that, they don't have the fiber, there's no nutrients, it, it, it acts like sugar in your blood. So it goes really quickly. And the insulin has to react in the same way to it as it does to white sugar. So when I'm talking about um, taking out sugar, let's talk about all white foods. So anything like bagels, crackers, chips, um, these are all processed refined foods. White rice, I talked about pasta, okay? So we wanna remove anything like that, cookies, candy, chocolate, of course, um, we'll talk about later. All of that creates this rush of, of sugar to your blood and all of it makes the pancreas work really hard. The interesting thing to know about the pancreas is that it can start to remember when it needs to send out insulin. So in other words, let's say every day after lunch you have a cookie your pancreas remembers, oh, I've, I need to send insulin out because here comes that cookie. And it's a step ahead of you. And so there it goes, it sends it out no matter what you eat. The hard part about that is that we only have so much. If our pancreas is always working on overtime, but you, you may or may not know what diabetes is, but this is um, your, 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 the cells that take in the insulin start locking it out too much, it's on insulin overload, locks it out, and that's how uh, metabolic syndrome is created, which you may or may not have heard of, and diabetes is created. And so, um, and just having kind of um, high blood sugar. You can have high blood sugar without having, you know, it can be too high. So, um, so the pancreas has a memory of that, but it also, which is just so weird, it can, just by looking at food, that makes it like sugary food that makes your mouth water. It can send out insulin in, in and get ready for that because digestion begins in the brain, and I'll be talking about that a little bit more. So when so when you're thinking about like you have your bagel after lunch or or excuse me your cookie after lunch or your bagel for breakfast, your blood sugar raises really fast. Insulin rushes out really quickly, takes it away. You feel good really quickly for a while, and then you notice the energy energy crash that cranky lethargic feeling that comes after it. It might be late afternoon, it might be, it could happen all day long actually, the up and down. So obviously our body needs a quick fix and what we reach for again is of course sugar because sugar happens, it brings us right back up really quickly. Hence the vicious cycle of the sugar up and down, up and down. Okay, so we just crave more sugar because um, anyway, oh yeah, I just said that. So, the other challenge that comes with sugar is that when you're trying to lose weight, insulin, that when the insulin takes the excess sugar out of your bloodstream, it stores it in your muscles, like I said, the liver for the brain, and then the fatty tissues. So the challenge is if we eat late at night when we're not working out or exercising or needing to use our brain, it gets stored as fat. The insulin being produced to bring the blood sugar back to normal. So, 
So, so there's, again, a lot of insulin being produced to bring our blood sugar back to normal. And the body can't produce two other hormones. And this is really important. I forgot to talk about this last night. If there's insulin in your bloodstream, the body can't produce a hormone called glucagon and a hormone called human growth hormone. Okay? What that means is if glucagon is there, if, if insulin is there, glucagon which is used to break down glycogen to glucose in the liver to help break down fat, can't be released. Okay, so it's really important to know. It is a, it's the hormone that releases fat in storage to use as fuel, which is what we want. We want to be able to burn that so that we can lose weight um, and also stay healthy. So sugary food disallows the glucagon. It also means that when human growth hormone can't be released, we can't build muscle, which is a big deal. So we really want to halt the flow of insulin in our body. Oh, I just spilled my water. Halt the flow of insulin in our bodies as much as we can. Okay? It's really, really important for long-term health. Okay. So we've got this now. We've got the insulin production. We've got the release of um, insulin. Uh, effective glucagon and growth hormones so that we can't release fat. We've got the fact that it's inflammatory, uh, rots your teeth, it causes osteoporosis, etc. So now you have all the good reasons why it's really, really important to begin to eliminate and take out refined sugar. Okay? Which leads me to our, this idea of um, wanting to curb the cravings of sugar and leads me to greens. Okay, so greens is which is what we're going to be putting in a lot of this week. Dark leafy greens. I'm just looking for it in the in the ebook I sent you. And also the ebook has some other great reasons why we should more more details on specific things that sugar does to our bodies, like how it affects heart disease, cancer, um, immune system. It's great to read through that. And then, of course, I had to list the top 20 reasons why sugar affects your health. Just as a little reminder, a little reminder as to why you want to be strong and keeping sugar out of your diet. So, the most missing food in our diet these days happens to be green vegetables. Um, learning to cook and eat green, dark leafies is essential for creating health. Because when you nourish yourself for green, with greens, you begin to crowd out the foods that make you sick. And I... I know it sounds like too good to be true, but I can promise you it's this weird phenomena that happens that when you begin to nourish yourself with all the good stuff that's in the greens, they're high in calcium, they're high in magnesium, iron, potassium, they're high in vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, they're crammed with fiber, folic acid, which is a B vitamin, chlorophyll. When you eat that, you're nourishing your body so deeply but you really don't begin to crave the stuff that gives you that quick energy because you have this all-day energy from, from the greens right there. Um, so they also do things like they purify the blood. They um, help with cancer prevention. They're highly fibrous, which is great, and we will be talking a little bit more about why fiber is so incredibly important for our immune, immune health uh, next week. But they're, they're, uh, they improve circulation. They improve your immune system, all those vitamins. They promote um, healthy intestinal flora. So many good reasons. You can steam them. You can saute them. You can uh, roast them because greens also include things like Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Um, and you can put them in your green smoothies. So I want to really get you guys eating, drink, trying green smoothies and seeing what you think. Some of you may have been doing it already. Some of you may be new to this. I am going to be sending you guys a whole bunch of recipes after the call or after this class so that you can experiment. The recipes are great because they're a whole food, they're crammed with fiber, and they can be a great meal replacement. And um, what I want to note is that you guys actually start beginning to put in the superfoods too. So play with the chia the flax, the hemp seeds, um, because those are all healthy, great fats. And we want to start thinking about um, our meals being really balanced. So the, you want to have your, 
your healthy fibers, but, and but you also want to have your protein, your fruits and vegetables, your healthy fat, so that everything is creating that great blood sugar. I keep that blood sugar balance. I keep talking about. Okay, so um, we'll we'll talk about that more in a little bit as well. Kind of that balance of meal. But start playing with that, and then you can also add in a protein powder. And I'm going to send a list of protein powders that I like, but um, you can get vegan protein powders, and you can get whey protein powders. Uh, I, I stay away from anything with casein in it, which is comes from dairy. Um, and then you want to be careful that you're not eating sugary protein powders. You can get them sweetened with stevia or xylitol, but nothing which you don't want regular sugar. I will say that you can have some stevia even though we're eliminating sugar out of our diet. Um, and Because stevia is a natural, it comes from a plant, it's very, very sweet, it's 300 times sweeter than sugar, and it doesn't kick in the immune, the uh, insulin response. And nor does it make you crave sugar later. I've never had a craving, you know, when I eat sugar, usually later I'll want more sugar. That doesn't happen with stevia. So you can explore stevia. My favorite brand is called New Naturals, and it's NU Naturals. Um, some of them have like a weird aftertaste, but I don't really get that with this one, so it's a favorite. So if you're new to green smoothies, you can even start adding a little stevia in there to sweeten it up if you want. With a green smoothie, you want to really shoot for at least 50-50 with the greens and the fruit, and then moving and inching your way to 60-40 with greens being 60%. Last night, I talked about the importance of, uh, well, I talked about green smoothies and metabolic syndrome and diabetes. If you have a high blood sugar, if, if you've been tested for that, or if you have metabolic syndrome, which I think the stat now is like 60% of Americans actually have it, and most don't know it. Um, and it's easy to have it, even if you're thin. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you're overweight at all, to have, having high blood sugar. It can be hidden. But just note that if you think you might have it, if you have an inkling of it, if you're just having trouble losing weight, even if you're eating really healthy, you might want to cut back on your fruit consumption for a while. And that's fructose. And not high fructose corn syrup, which is evil and awful and you don't want to eat that, but fructose from fruit. And that is a, I, I think fruit is a great thing to eat. But you want to keep, if you want to really start balancing out your blood sugar and looking to lose weight, you want to start thinking about eating 25 grams or less of fructose a day. And if you're eating fruit, think low glycemic fruit. So apples, berries, those are very low glycemic, which means there's not a lot of sugar in that fruit. High glycemic fruit would be fruit that actually tastes really sweet, and you can tell it's like bananas, pineapple, Right? Those are high glycemic fruits. Grapes. So you want to start thinking, okay, if I want to eat less fruit or eat less sugar, I'm going to put a light, low glycemic fruit in my smoothie and keep it to a minimum. Okay? So that's just one note I wanted to put out there um, for the smoothies. Okay. I think that covers... Oh, one more note about food. Uh, we are going ahead and eliminating the whole dirty dozen. Okay, so this week, if you've been just starting to eliminate those foods, this week, or last week if you have, this week we're eliminating it entirely. Anything artificial, anything uh, with artificial colors, preservatives, nitrates, MSG, of course sugar, um, bad fats, trans fats, the list you have the list. We're going to eliminate that now and begin readying our body to be really clean and in and that's a, right there is a light detox when you're eliminating all that stuff. That's a good beginning of a detox if you're eating organic. And then next week we may move, we will be moving into uh, our detox. And I'm going to let you guys choose whether you want to have a, a, a kind of intensive detox or you want detox light. We will be we also are going to be removing some of the top tr triggers, five triggers of food, food triggers. And those are corn, soy, gluten, eggs, and dairy. 
And these are foods that a lot of people may think they're fine with, but until they begin to try to remove those foods, they um, don't really know how those foods are affecting them because these are highly in, uh, sensitive foods that cause a lot of, they could cause things from bloat and um, acne to IBS to constipation to inflammation, joint pain, um, the list goes on. And until you let your body rest from those foods, like actually give it a rest, a good two weeks at least, you really don't know how it's affecting you. And um, it can also be helping you hold on to excess weight that you don't want as well. But you'd be amazed, amazed. My son um, has a lot of allergies, and recently we took him off all these triggers for about six weeks. And he's been eating oats his whole life. Oats in the form of oatmeal or granola bars, or they're, hit, they're in a lot of food too. And um, I always thought it was fine. Well, we took oats out of his diet for six weeks, and we put it back in in the form of gluten-free oatmeal. And the reason they say gluten-free, by the way, is because a lot of times they process the oats at a plant with gluten. So oats are inherently gluten-free, but you have to just make sure they're not processed with gluten foods. And within an hour, I got a call from school. His whole body had exploded out in the worst eczema. It was like fire engine red, just rash all over his body. It was horrible. And so that's what I mean by not really knowing. Because he'd eaten oats before, and he never had that. But when your body is working hard all the time and causing any, some kind of reaction, usually it's to the protein in the food, it just, it might be low grade going on, like I said, underneath. And you, without giving your body a chance to take, take that break, you just really won't know. So we're going to be removing those foods next week. And you will have lots of recipes. Um, and removing things like alcohol, coffee, and eating really whole, clean food. So we'll be talking about that. If you're somebody that's like, oh my gosh, it's too much for me, I just, I don't wanna do a full detox, that's fine. You can just go to your whole grains, your meat, your, your good grass-fed meats, your vegetables, your fruit, and your healthy fats, and you'll be great. Nuts and seeds included in there too. So you can just take a week to decide. But meanwhile, this week, we're taking out the sugar, we're cutting back on coffee, we're doing the dirty dozen. All right, I'm gonna just move here because I realized I need to really put my computer up. So hold on for a second. I'm going to go grab a table. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. I'm going to switch positions here because I keep telling, you can see every time I move, I'm shaking this thing. And so this way, hopefully, will be a little bit better so that um, I can move without shaking the video. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So we talked about, we've got all that going. Now let's talk a little bit about um, balancing your plate. Having a balanced plate is so, so important. Because like I said, we want to balance our blood sugar. And I think many of us also want to lose weight. So in order to do that, we got to get the insulin out from spiking so that we can release fat. We've got to get control of our cortisol, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Cortisol is the fight or flight response that when it's in our body, it's impossible to lose weight, sadly. And we have to um, begin putting what I call the 40-30-30 plan on. So 40% of our plate is, I usually say 50%, but you can always have 50% of vegetables and fruit. That's your plate. 30% is protein and 30% is healthy fat. Don't worry about the fat part here because I really believe that you can have as much healthy fat as you really want. I mean, obviously you don't want to eat nuts and seeds like five cups a day. You might want to keep that a little bit to a minimum of maybe no more than a half a cup a day, now that I say it. But, but you could have a whole avocado, you can have a few tablespoons of healthy oil, healthy oils being olive oil, sesame oils, nut oils that are cold pressed, um, coconut oil, flax oil, these are all good oils, you'll be getting a list. Um, you can have that, you can have, um, like I said, avocado, seeds and nuts. Have your healthy fats, that's gonna keep you full longer too. And so you've got, so you've got, and then the protein, and we're still exploring protein, how much feels good for you, how much doesn't. 
Somebody noted last night that they noticed that the protein really kept them full longer when they were eating it. That's the point. It takes longer to digest, longer to burn. Keeps your energy sustained. So we're going for 40, 30, 30. Hope, hopefully that's clear. That plays back into your green smoothies, right? So the green smoothies, the idea being um, you've got your fruits, your vegetables. Your, your protein could be the protein powder. It could be almond butter is really good. Protein in the form of hemp seeds, uh, but find a protein. And then the healthy fat. That also includes chia, flax, hemp. Those are healthy fats. You can put a little flax oil in there. You can put a little coconut oil in there. Put an avocado in there, which makes it super creamy and delicious. It's my favorite thing to do in a smoothie. So then you've got your balanced meal. It's also going to slow down the absorption of sugar in your bloodstream, right? So you've got, you've got your you know, your fructose sugar, but if you add that protein and the um, fat in there, that's going to slow down the absorption of the, of, of the sugar in the blood. So have fun exploring your green smoothies. I realized that I didn't start us out with our energy um, uh, tool to this, this class. So I want to just take a break and, and give you guys a new tool for bringing down your stress and re-energizing your body to um, be really grounded. Because this is like, it's called the triple warmer. So we're just going to take a deep breath. <sighs> and we're going to practice something that I, this, this whole little series I love. And I always notice an effect. This is great if you're feeling anxiety or worry or if you um, feel like you're just busy, just constantly busy. So I, I'm going to have you just root in your seat for a minute. Put your feet on the floor. Take a deep breath in. Close your eyes. And bring your hands lightly or fingertips over your eyes. So you're just pressing your fingertips lightly over your eyes sideways and you take a deep breath. Then you're going to slowly slide your fingertips to your temples. That's very lightly on your temples, which is a meridian point. And you're going to take another deep breath. And now you're going to take your fingertips right over your ears right behind your ears, and you're going to press into your head, just really press. Then you're going to drag your fingers around your ear, pressing into your head, and around your ear, all the way down to below your ear. Take another deep breath. And then you're going to take your fingertips right from below your ears, and you're going to pull down the side of your neck. These are your lymph nodes. This is a lymph, lymphatic system, and I love this so much. You're going to press in right below your jawline, and drag it down your neck. I love that, I could do that 50 times. And then you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna grab your shoulders and squeeze and let your, your elbows just drop down. And you're just gonna squeeze. This is where we hold a lot of tension. Just, just take another deep breath. And then draw your hands all the way over your heart and one more deep breath. And just take a second to notice how you feel. And that is called a triple warmer. And I put that in your doc, in your, in your um, PDF, and I talk about how to do it. Because this thing is, the, is such a miracle. Because it's, we're, we're working in with the points. The, meridian, the meridians are these channels that flow through our body. It's like an acupuncture point, And it connects to different organs in our body. This goes back thousands of years to Chinese medicine, and it's an incredible process. But um, I've never had acupuncture or acupressure. I highly recommend it. But what we've done is trace meridians that all lead to our adrenal glands. And that adrenal glands, I'm going to talk about next, but that's our fight or flight response. And this is when we're feeling busy. Just going ahead and doing that. I don't know if you guys feel better, but I relax me immediately. It will help us feel like we're out of danger, that we can just our, our, our parasympathetic nervous system can come right back on. So I'm really hoping, it's also the triple warmer helps to tap into your thyroid as well. So that's all really important in relaxation. So I'm hoping you guys can really experiment with that this week and see how you feel. 
for me, it's an immediate ground or I just relax really quickly when I go into that. So this is going to lead us into our next thing, talking about stress. Okay? Stress in the role of your health. And this one's a big one for me, and I think this is, you guys are all going to click in and love this too. So there's a lot of scientific documentation that shows the connection between weight gain to stress, the inability to lose weight to stress. Cortisol, cortisol is a hormone that gets produced from our adrenal glands, and our adrenal glands sit right on top of our kidneys, they're these little nut-shaped glands, and they're in control of our fight or flight response. So the other hormones that come from the adrenal glands are norepinephrine and adrenaline, these are, and, and like I mentioned, cortisol. And these are imperative to reacting to stress. And they're there for those times back in the day when we needed to run away from a lion really fast. And they're there for emergency mode. Cortisol um, it is, it's our, it's, well, let me just back up. What we're experiencing now with cortisol production, and this is all over the place with, with studies and it's everywhere, is that we're living lives that are really busy. And we're going from one task to another, to another, to another. We're working, we're scheduling, we're overscheduled. We're, our lives are busy. And when that happens, we have this low-grade cortisol pumping into our bloodstream all the time. So it doesn't have to be running away from a lion, which is quick and dirty and fast, and then it's done. And back in the days when we needed that, we'd come back to our relaxed state again, and we'd stay there for a long time. But now we're kind of doing this constant pumping of cortisol into our bloodstream all the time. Okay, and when that happens, three things, the top three things that I'm going to give you the top three things that go on in your body. One is that it raises your blood sugar, okay? So, and we talked about blood sugar a little bit ago, right, with the sugar when you eat sugar. But blood sugar gets rise, raised when you have cortisol in your bloodstream. So, like, for instance, for me, like, in the morning, I know that my blood sugar is rising because I have so much to do with the kids. I'm trying to make breakfast, I'm trying to make lunches, you know, I'm trying to get them to get their homework together, to get them dressed, I'm sure you can all relate. That raises my cortisol, right? So then I know my, my blood sugar is being raised, and it raises insulin, which I just talked about, which fat stores fat. It's a fat storage thing. It also may make you le leptin resistant, which is leptin is the hunger hormone, and when you're leptin resistant, which many people are, you don't notice when you're full. It's a weird thing, and you don't, it's a hunger control hormone. So there's number one. Number two is it raises your blood pressure. Cortisol raises your blood pressure, and you start to see that in your 40s and older. And the third thing is it, is it, it hinders your immune system, okay? So these are the top three things that cortisol does. I want to talk a little bit about how that affects um, or how coffee affects cortisol, because a lot of people think that coffee is just fine, right? It, it's got some antioxidants in it, it's been shown to help with certain um, health-related issues, it's all great. However, it absolutely, well, first of all, it's acidic, and we talked about alkalinity and acidity just a little bit, but also, it is very, it, all, it, it releases cortisol into your bloodstream, okay? No matter what, when you drink coffee, cortisol is released. So you're stressed out, you're tired, you're rushing around making the lunches, and you're drinking coffee. You're releasing more cortisol. So it's a double whammy, right? So I want you guys to just think about that when you say, oh, I just can't let go of my coffee. It's too hard. I need it. Well, it is also creating that insulin crash, right? It's releasing cortisol, which creates insulin, which relates to that roller coaster energy crash. It's acidic. You would be shocked and amazed, and some people in, who are in this class have noticed this themselves firsthand, that when you take coffee out, you no longer have those energy crashes. You don't have the cortisol that's pumping into your bloodstream. For me now, when I drink a lot of coffee, I break into a sweat, because that is the cortisol. That is the, my, my cortisol in my bloodstream. 
and just kind of this autonomic reaction that occurs. So you might really feel so much better by not having the coffee. So I encourage you guys to explore lessening coffee or even eliminating it for a while. It won't kill you to try a week's worth of, of not, not having coffee. And have a little green tea instead. This is why I really encourage you all to try that. But that is cortisol. And so um, when I, I sent you guys this article called, um, I think it's called the Stress Food, what's it called? Stress Food Article. And it's about how the French eat. And for a long time, you know, we thought Americans were so much, you know, well, what do I want to say? The French eat, they drink a lot of wine, they eat a lot of high fat food. But for some reason, they have less heart disease, they have lower cholesterol, they have, they're thinner overall. And why is that? They eat their largest meal at lunch. And now what we're realizing is they, they really cherish their food. They really sit and they luxuriate in it. They take about an hour and a half for lunch. They don't work. They go with friends and they are mindful of what they're eating. But they're predominantly eating in a relaxed state. And that is key. Because, as I mentioned, when we're eating in a stressed state, that produces a cortisol, and the cortisol holds on to fat. When you're eating under stress, or when you're stressed, period, you cannot release fat. The stress hormone in the brain is the same stress hormone that turns off the ability to lose weight. Okay? So it's really important to know. So now, read through the article. It's a fun article. But the, like I said, if the French are eating in a parasympathetic dominance, that's a relaxed state, that is most likely what we're looking at now as to why they're healthier, why they're not getting the weight. Okay? So it's a fun, it's a fun thing to think about. The stress response also help, it decreases your nutrient absorption. Okay? It, it, there's a loss of calcium and precious minerals when you eat under stress. Your blood cholesterol levels rise. And if, like I talked about before, because of the cortisol, it increases your blood pressure. So it's really, so what I really want to encourage you to do is when you sit down to eat a meal, notice, am I in a relaxed state? Am I truly relaxed? I know for me at night, after a busy night of getting the kids all back on their activities or getting them to activities, having to eat beforehand, I get stressed at dinner time. I'm usually managing them with our homework and practicing piano and I'm trying to cook at the same time and I feel stressed and by the time I sit down for dinner, it's like, ugh, my heart rate's up, I'm just like, ugh. So it's really important to sit and actually take some deep breaths, practice the breath work from last week, take your deep breaths and get your body into that parasympathetic state. So you can digest your meal, so you can actually enjoy your meal. And just take a few deep breaths, and then halfway through the meal, try it again. Notice, you know, am I still relaxed? Have I, have I, have we been talking about stressful things? Also note that it doesn't need to be, stress can be perceived, but it can be also watching a show. It can be that stresses you out. It can be worry. It can be anxiety. All of these things tap into that. So... You can try the triple warmer, you can do your deep breaths, but bring yourself back down to that relaxed state before you eat. That leads me into the second thing, which is the digestive function. Because this is the, um, the article I sent you called the metabolic, about the metabolic Power of Vitamin A, which is awareness. This is this other side to, to digesting your food. There's a thing called CPDR, which means digestive and calorie burning. Uh, excuse me, what does it mean? <laughs> I always forget. It's, the, cephal it's the, the head cephalic phase of digestion. So the meaning 30 to 40 percent of our digestion starts in our head and mouth. 30 to 40 percent. If we skip that, we di digest our food 40 percent or 60 percent. No. Math. 40% of our digestion is missed, right? Okay, so that's what I want to say. So what I'm, what I'm talking about is sitting and actually looking at your food, noticing your food, that starts the brain to start thinking about it, which starts the enzymes in your mouth to start kicking in. We have enzymes that help digest the food. If we skip that part, 
We might chew our food three times, not even notice we're eating it. It goes right down. We're skipping the digestive process. So this article is wonderful because it talks about um, some studies that were done where we, they took uh, a group of uh, college students and they gave them a mineral drink. And they took 50% of them and they whispered in their ear. Two, two people were whispering different things in their ear while they drank the drink. And the other half, they drank this mineral drink just drinking it. And they started both groups out in a relaxed state. So the relaxed group drank, the other group drank with the talking. When they took the results, they found that 0% of the people that were being talked to, or none of the people in that group absorbed any of the minerals, 0% of the minerals, nothing. They peed out all the sodium chloride and everything that was in there. The other half that just drank in a relaxed state absorbed 100%. It's a really powerful thing because when we're multitasking, when we're sitting at our desk, when we're watching TV, when we eat, this is all the same thing as having people talk in your ear. So no, if you want your to actually digest your food, if you want if you you want your body to take note that you're actually eating, you've got to be relaxed. You've got to be mindful. You've got to be aware. You've got to smell it. You've got to see it. Take in the beauty. Um, you know, look, you know, the aroma, all of this stuff is so important. And you've got to chew your food, okay? Because often we take three or four bites. Notice how many bites you actually normally take, and then we swallow. We're still missing that enzymatic process that we need to digest the food, to break it down and to assimilate it. You guys might be re really, really surprised when you start chewing your food in a relaxed state how much less food you actually eat, and how much you really, how, how quickly you feel satisfied. So I really encourage you to chew your food 20 to 30 times. It's gonna feel weird, trust me. When I started doing this years back, I just couldn't believe how weird it felt. It's like liquefying your food. It's really what we're supposed to be doing. So you wanna really liquefy your food. Chew, 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 swallow. It'll take longer to eat, Yes, but that's a good thing. You'll get full faster, you'll feel more satisfied, and you'll really assimilate the nutrients. It'll fire up your metabolism. So about five years ago, I finally figured out my digestive issues, which I had for almost 25 years. And I guarantee you that 50% of my issue was the fact that I was eating while rushing. I never noticed what I was really eating. and I didn't chew my food. I chewed four, five, six times like everybody else. And when I took all that in and I started eating relaxed, chewing my food, I guarantee 50% of my digestive issue was cleared up just because of that. It was really, really powerful. So have fun this week experimenting with being relaxed, being mindful, being aware, and chewing your food and see the power, feel the power of that in your meals. It's pretty, it's pretty exciting and very, very profound, very profound. And do read those articles because I, I go into more depth, uh, much more depth with the articles. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to recap now what we've been talking about. I can get my notes back up here. We talked about a lot today. We talked about sugar, the effects of sugar in our body and why it's so important to eliminate sugar. We talked about... Um, getting rid of the toxic 12 completely. We talked about the detox that's coming up and the five food triggers and um, reading our body. Just to make sure you guys understand, the more we can get all these triggers, these, uh, the toxic 12 out and the sugar out, the easier the detox will be and the coffee. Because um, you don't want to go into a detox without having eliminated some of this because you can get kind of what's called a detox crisis and you can feel really icky. So the more you can start eliminating that now for more of the detox next week, the better. It'll be much easier on you. We talked about adding in dark leafy greens, the importance of that, and drinking green smoothies, but also limiting your fructose. If you know that you're a person that, that is holding on to weight and you're not sure why, or if you know you have metabolic syndrome or diabetes, you want to begin, or you want to keep your fruit limited to that 25 grams of fructose. Talked about balancing your plate, 40, 30, 30, uh, including your smoothies. Um, we talked about 
stress and the role of stress in weight loss and and health overall with uh, blood sugar, with high blood pressure, lowering the immune system. Uh, it also, also by the way, I didn't say this, but stress of course causes inflammation. Stress is one of the lead causes of health issues. Talked about mindfulness and eating and chewing your food. In your ebook, I also gave you something called What Kind of Hungry Are You? And this is a really wonderful thing I've often printed out and put up in my kitchen. And I'll know, like, am I really hungry? What kind of hungry am I? Am I emotionally hungry? Am I stress hungry? Am I bored hungry? And just take a few minutes to just tap into that. I, I'll put my hand on my belly and my heart and take a few deep breaths and just say, gosh, am I really hungry? Do I really want this food? And begin to tap into what my body's needs really are. Maybe I just need to call a girlfriend, or maybe I just need to get a hug from my husband. Maybe I just need to go on a walk outside and clear my head. Or maybe I need to take five deep breaths, you know? Just begin practicing tapping into your, the, your hunger and what it is you might really be needing. This is very powerful and it takes practice. It's not easy to do overnight. It does take practice. But I encourage you to practice that. Um, and then, you know, going back to our food mood log, keep going on that. I know it's not easy to do every day. But remember that it's there. It's going to remind you of all the things you've been doing. What? Well, well, it'll remind you of the gratitude. And by the way, you don't have to put that in your log if you're sharing it with me. If you, it's personal. Write it in your journal. You don't have to share that with me. But um, we're going to be layering on this week with last week. So we're still doing the breath, and we're still doing the water, and we're still doing uh, the exercise, and all the things we were focusing on last week, and we're adding these things in. So we've got... Uh, quite a list going um, and let me know if you have any questions and definitely go on Facebook it can be a really fun group to be on definitely feel free to reply all and email ask questions engage with everybody else if you have the question I guarantee someone else does um, and just have fun with this and let me know um, if you're if you're struggling with anything but also let me know your successes share with the group we all want to hear and I think that really does it for the day. Um, one more time, I'm going to look at my ebook. Mm -hmm. Slowing down. Focus on the week, the dirty dozen, sugar, leafies. Yeah. And the bar workout, finally. Try the bar workout. Try the hit workout. I would love your feedback on those. Really would. It's important to me to hear if you're liking them, if they're too hard, too easy, too fast. Let me know. And I look forward to talking to you again. I, again, I, the last thing we talked about last night was the supplements, but we didn't have a lot of time. So feel free to look that list over. Let me know. I have brands that I love. Um, I have a brand that I'm using now that includes everything I think is imperative for everyone. Um, so let me know if you want to order from me. I can get you little packs. I truly have researched this forever. And I can get you little packs with your own little custom vitamins in there that you take morning and night. So you don't have to have all the bottles, which is just such a hassle. You can just have your morning and night packs already done for you. Throw it in your purse. You're set. I can order those for you. So let me know, and I will do that. Um, but we'll talk about this again a little, little later down the road. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here, and I will talk to you soon. <sighs> See you soon.